Welcome, children. It is story time. Oh, boy, story time. Hold on. I lost Abigail. Okay, I'm ready for a tragic tale. Once upon a time, I was born. <laughs> Shortly after, I was cursed with knowledge and began using these books to defeat great evil. But how did you use the books to defeat great evil and anti wicker butt? Well, kiddo, it went a little something like this. Miss Wickerbot, that is very cool. Oh, yes, very cool. Oink, oink. I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but I bet it's not as cool as this sponsor. Wait! Th there's no sponsor. No, no sponsor? Uh, yeah, according to the records, they all backed out last second, and we delayed this video like a month, but they kept backing out. So, uh, yeah, no sponsor. <laughs> Banjo angry, no sponsor. Ah! Yeah, I bought a green screen. What of it? I think it's funny. Now you might think the green screen isn't doing a good job. And you'd be right, but at least he's trying his best. Sorry, my voice is all messed up because I just got COVID. Actually, I just tested uh, negative for, <laughs> for it yesterday. I, I haven't got COVID anymore. Look, a dinosaur. Wait. My goodness, my hair is very big. Anyway, all this to say, just go follow my Twitch, because when I do these boss runs, uh, that, that's where I stream it. Anyway, go watch this video. It's a month late, but we got there. Woo! Hello, I've returned. Uh, you know, I was just on vacation for a second there. Oh, what's, what's it been? A month and a half? Not bad. All right, anyway, it's time for the Wickerbottom speedrun. Wickerbottom got a rework, where she basically just got a bunch of new books. Some are useful, some are uh, not so useful, and we're going to be using all the good ones. So the first few days are all the same, obviously. Get grass. Twigs, flint. Also, finding a totally normal tree on day one. Excuse me, frog. I also found a pig village before finding gold, which is kind of wonky. Finding everything in the wrong order, but it's fine. And the wormhole took us to the mosaic biome. Would you look at that? What, what kind of luck? Make sure to commit California so that we can see you during the night. And then we found the swamp. The swamp is good because, you know, reads and reads equals books and books, books equals power. And then I didn't change the world settings, uh, but I got a read trap, which is very rare, but like, was, <laughs> that's pretty convenient because read trap is um, good. And Wickerbottom likes having the read trap because you have a ton of reads for a ton of books. Anyway, it's pig massacre time because I want a hand bat and I want their homes for my, um, my <laughs> alchemy engine. Except I didn't even need an alchemy engine because I kind of forgot that Wickerbottom can make alchemy engine stuff just by using a science machine. But it's fine. Handbat, lantern, football helmet, blah, 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 all that. You go smash, no, you go death. And then I found the shadow piece set piece on, what's this, day three? That's pretty, um, pretty nuts. Because obviously we're killing all the bosses, so we need to find this anyway. A wild fire hound. Oh, wait, no, it's part of a, a set piece with a fire stamp. And then I see a path, and I saw the stage hand, so I'm thinking, hmm, Chester must be nearby. And I find Chester. Very cool. Then after cooking this forest, we've got plenty of charcoal. Now, usually I get 46 charcoal, but I kind of forgot about that and got extra. But it's fine, because I actually need extra, because I need to make a boomerang and stuff later. And I slaughtered so many innocent creatures. That Krampus came along and said no. Also, since we have the extra inventory space, we grabbed the, the, the pamphlet because uh, Chester can have it, yes. And we're gonna head back to that living tree to get the living logs, because we need those. Then I picked up three mandrakes. Um, I'm not gonna use any mandrakes. I don't know why I picked them up, because I just just don't use them. Also, I'm gonna need a whole bunch of silk, as you can tell, by slaughtering all of the spiders. And then we found the bishop head. We need to find all of these heads. Obviously, you know this. Digging up the shrooms for vegetables for later, because we're gonna be making, um, 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 pierogi. Also, you thought that beefloo was our friend? No, he's our food. 
food now. Anyway, we found the terrarium before, but I really didn't want to go and fight four of those pig guard people. So I waited until I got the pan flute, put them to sleep, and bam, the terrarium is mine. And I'm making sure that I'm picking up all the seeds that I can see on the screen, because seeds good, especially with Wicker Bottom. You'll see why later. With four wear pigs chasing us, we, me, Chester, and the beeflow friend get out of there. And another living tree. That means more living. And now I think I found where I'm gonna base, so um, let me just give you a seizure by cut. <laughs> yeah, that's it, just let me give you a seizure. Well, dying. Then forget how to build the base, so listen to some dweeb on YouTube about how to make it, oh, and I forgot, ovens. Then we don't have gears for a fridge, so it's fine. We'll just be a poor man fridge, put it in the chest, and we're gonna build a bookcase um, in the wrong place. I was meant to put it one tile to the right, but it's fine. A bookcase counts as an alchemy engine, and you can put Wicker Bottom's books inside the bookcase to make them slowly recharge, meaning you can just like basically have infinite uses of all your books as long as you wait for them to recharge. And I also made this spider book where it puts a spider web on the floor, which anything that moves on it will move a whole lot slower. So I was thinking I'll take this to the caves and use it against Ancient Guardian. Then we're building my farm plot and building all the pierogies because I did say we're gonna go to the ruins, but not yet. We're gonna be going to the dragonfly first because he gives us guaranteed gems. And gems is what we need for the ruins. Finally, we're going insane. And so being insane with Wicker Bottom, uh, uh, it's it's very, very easy because reading all of these books, I'm gonna be insane like all the time. For dragonfly, I'm gonna be using Wicker Bottom's new books. Um, and I started killing and capturing bees. I didn't need to do this. I only had to kill a few bees rather than like capturing them because I just needed to make like four or five of the grumble bee books. But I was thinking of that I'd have to keep making the books, so I kind of wanted a way to farm them. Anyway, since I have Nightmare Fuel on the Terrarium, uh, I spawned in the twins next to the reed trap, thinking that they would be able to clear it, and the nights are way too short right now, so it would take way too many days for them to clear it, so we'll do that in winter, so um, at least we tried. That, kids, is why you don't mess with tentacles. I almost got stunlocked fully there. So I'm not gonna loot the reed trap, but I am gonna loot this one tentacle that killed this kitty multiple times. And it's full moon. So he grabbed Gloma, of course. If you miss Gloma, you are a sinner. It's time to start spamming the apicultural notes. I don't know, the Grumblebee book. That's what I'm gonna be calling it, Grumblebee book. And you have to just deal with the consequences of summoning all of these Grumblebees. Now, each use of the book drains your sanity, and if you're insane or get dropped into insanity when you read the book, it spawns in an extra nightmare creature. So that's a pretty good way of balancing it. But unfortunately, there is a hard limit on how many Grumblebees we can have at one time, which is, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty cool. Anyway, once I've got my Grumblebee army, we're gonna go ahead and put all the books in Chester, you know, just in case my Grumblebees die. I'm sure they won't. I'm sure everything will go perfectly. And then we found a Clockwork Knight, so we're just gonna go ahead and kill up for the gears. Ha, you, th you think one hound is good enough to kill my bees? Okay, hold on. There's like five hounds here. Okay, we're gonna have to top up my Grumblebee army before we begin. Anyway, putting down two signs because I really don't want any larvae squeaking through and hurting my Grumblebees. And then we're gonna put walls around them to block the larvae. And we're gonna start the fight with my army of Grumblebees. Anyway, so I kind of made a mistake here. If I just stayed attacking Dragonfly, you probably would have been, uh, been able to do enough damage to make Dragonfly drop down. But anyway, normal fight, six or seven hits, then step back to dodge, and Dragonfly most of the time was trying to attack me, so my Grumble Bees didn't die uh, very often just from Dragonfly's normal attacks. Uh, but, but that's that, that bit of the fight. As soon as Dragonfly flies off to summon Grumble... Summon Grumble Bees. No, Dragonfly summons Larvae. I'm going to take my Grumble Bees around the signs, make sure they don't get stuck on the signs, and uh, behind the wall behind the wall and uh, yeah because we don't want the grumble bees getting set on fire or taking lots of fire damage and dragonflies back baby so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, go, go ham on him get it cuz ham man anyway we're able to knock him down which is good um, um yes just free dps except two of my grumble bees are stuck on a lava pond idiots and a hound out of nowhere <laughs> This is where you clear hound mounds before the fight. Then Dragonfly enraged, and I thought I was too late to blow the pan flute, so I kind of ran away, then blew the pan flute, but it was kind of too late, and my Grumblebees got toasted. <laughs> Good thing I brought the extra books, so I cast all of those real quick to summon a few more Grumblebees, put Dragonfly to sleep, and uh, now we can continue the fight with not a full army of Grumblebees, but at least we have some Grumblebees. This time Dragonfly enraged and I was good at the game and I hit that pan flute before he stomped my Grumblebees into the ground with fire, and uh, yes. Anyway, let's just cut to the end of the fight, nothing else happens. We kill him, we get gems, we win, good job boys, high five Grumblebees. These Grumblebees don't despawn and if you go too far away they just teleport to you, but if you go into like the 
caves for too long, they despawn. And the other way around, if you spawn them in the caves and you're on the surface for too long, they just despawn. And if you log off, sometimes they despawn, so I don't know. There's one other thing I forgot to tell you. Uh, Wicker Bottom was kind of nerfed. That so if Wicker Bottom eats food that's stale or rotten, she gains no health from it, which means um, I need to eat these brohees while they're still green and they're not looking very green. Anyway, make my way down into the ruins and uh, I found them pretty fast, very cool. So we start looting the ruins a little And with us, we brought some nightmare fuel, the living logs, the gems we got, and we're hoping for a second and third yellow gem and then green gems are just always nice. I found this lonely little science station uh, here, so we're gonna set up base here and just have, this will, this will be where we'll craft all of our stuff. And also we're gonna, where we're gonna dump all of our stuff. Cause now, right before crafting stuff, we're gonna go kill Agent Guardian. We find him, he bonks into a pillar, what an idiot. Anyway, we're gonna put down our Star Wars staff that we made at the station, cause we do need at least one. So even if we get another one, uh, it's not a waste because we're gonna need two. And we use that web book. So the idea here is when Agent Guardian charges through it, he charges for a really long time. And you'll see later, it's kind of weird. He charges through the spider web, hits an obstacle, and he stays down on the floor for so long. Like, usually he stays down on the floor longer, depending on how long he was charging before he hit an obstacle. But here, he stayed on the floor for so long, it was kind of insane. Like, look at this, he's still on the floor. He, he never stays on the floor this long. This is insane. <laughs> he's, he's, he's still on the floor. What is this? Uh, finally, he's getting it back up. But anyway, that's basically the Agent Guardian fight. Um, I did use the Magic Luminescence during it because um, speed is good. And what did we get from the chest? Other than three tentacles nearly trying to snipe me. Imagine if Wicker Bomb could make shadow tentacles instead of normal tentacles. Wow. Anyway, we got pretty basically full sight and green gems. Very cool. Oh wait, hold on, never mind. We got a lazy explorer. I forgot about that. That's pretty big. That's cool. It just means we need one less walking cane. And then I hammered this station, it spawned a shadow creature and two cave spiders. Now here I was kind of spooked. I was thinking the spiders were going to eat the Agent Guardian home, which made me cry. Even though I'm not going to use it, but it still would have been painful. But they didn't. Anyway, after making all the stuff I needed, all the things I really needed is two uh, Star Cooler staffs and one deconstruction staff. But we made some armor and a magic luminescence and stuff as well. We're getting out of there. And we're going to leave some stuff there because we're going to be going back to the ruins later. Anyway, back on the surface, we're going to make the scaled furnace because I forgot to put it down earlier. And we're going to use a boomerang to hit a crow because I do need need some feather pencils which requires black feathers or jet feathers to make for some of Wicked Bottom's books and some of those books are pretty darn good. We make the Lux Eterna Redux which just puts a big light spot on the ground like when you join the game. Uh, it's okay but I have a Star Cooler staff so I didn't really need to use this but I just wanted to see if it was good or not. Anyway, winter starts, it's been raining so I have to sit next to my furnace to dry out like my goodness, what the heck. Then trade with the Pig King for gold because gold good. I mined some ice because I always do we need it for a fling and I can search. And then I did a little bit of farming. Mac Tusk hunting because we do want like two uh, lazy explorers in the future, but I ended up getting three, but it's fine. Better to have more than less or something. What's the saying? Waste not, want not. Oh, look at that skin I just got. Is that a weather fall skin? What the? Wow, very cool. And then here, you can like fake attack with a ranged weapon to force your grumblebees to attack something. So I used a blow dart fake attack to attack a vault goat, and then my grumblebees went and attacked it. Again, summoning a bee army, dealing with the consequences. <laughs> Is that four shadow? creatures and now we're doing the thing that we always do chopping down dead trees because i want living logs and chopping down dead trees still gives us a chance of spawning a tree guard that drops six living logs building a shadow manipulator because uh i need one because dark swords i'm planting all the pine cones we got from the dead trees because um um, yes, we want wood for later. Then I find the claw sack real fast. Then I find the deers without horns. Eh? But then as soon as I wake them up, they grew their horns, then bonked a couple of them to get the horn. So found claws pretty fast and very cool. Now, I don't know how this fight's gonna go uh, with my grumblebees. I'm assuming that they're just gonna get killed by the deers very fast, or they'll kill one of the deers and then claws will become enraged and then I'll be sad. Let's see. So the grumblebees did a pretty good job of staying on claws for the first bit of the fight. But then as the deers did their attack, the grumblebees started focusing their attack on the uh, deer, um, so they were ignoring me attacking claws. So, you know, the Grumblebees helped out for the first, maybe one third of the fight, but overall, they weren't that useful. I wouldn't recommend. I also could have made a tentacle trap and then, like, got some of the deer stuck so that claws was stuck in the tentacle trap, but it was a lot of setup and it kind of wasn't worth the time, but we do use a tentacle trap later, don't worry. Krampus. And by the time the Krampus come, uh, my Grumblebee army is completely wiped out, but it's fine. We got the mag, we got the speed. Stupid Krampus didn't give me the crumple sack and the horror show begins but then I shut down that show immediately because uh 
Ugh, hold on. I need to think of something better. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, sorry, brain doesn't work. Can't think of anything funny. I kill second form claws. No problem, because pro gamer. All right, let's uh, keep going. Anyway, opening claws is present, and I get a whole lot of nothing. What a garbage. And now uh, it's farming time. Now that the uh, nights are very long, we're gonna we're gonna spawn the Twins of Terror on top of the Tentacle Trap, and uh, the idea is here that we're getting kind of a two-in-one. We're cleaning the Tentacle Trap and also gonna be killing the Twins. The Twins will be almost dead by the time they kill the entire Tentacle Trap, so that's the idea, rather than having to kill them ourselves. That's way too much effort. Anyway, Ray's Nair is at 6,000 health, and they turn into their second phase. After the Twins peace out, we got all these Tentacle Spots, which we're gonna need for making the Tentacle Books for, uh, for the Tentacle Trap later. Guess which boss it's gonna be. Bet you won't comment. Then we made this book, the Upgraded Horticulture book, and it grows 15 crops around you. But the neat thing is, every single growth cycle, it replenishes all the nutrients in the soil, and it tends to the plant. So you're always guaranteed to get like one seed back, if not two, so you can renewably farm like this. And then once it gets down to 33%, just put it in the bookshelf and let it recharge. Back to the technical trap, and the twins are going ham. Not quite ham enough though, because the technical trap is like basically cleared. Oh my goodness. Imagine trying to fight these two at the same time. Look how fast they move. So after the second night of attempting to clear the technical trap, both of the twins are really low, but we're also low on technicals, so I'm probably gonna have to fight them myself. Lame, more farming. And then I cool down the twins on this night, and I realize, oh wait, Deerclops is coming. So I'm gonna have Deerclops, the twins, and I need to chop down my trees with Deerclops from earlier. So before Deerclops spawns, quickly throw down the Clops sign. Make sure to spam for it. Then Deerclop spawns, but before he saw my sign, he got interested in a tentacle and just started pounding on it. So now you could witness my awful attempt of trying to get the twins to fight Deerclops. It kind of worked, but then when I did it, I realized, oh wait, I'm pretty sure the twins' minions eat food. So I was thinking, oh no, they're gonna eat Deerclops' eyeball. So I quickly rushed in there to grab Deerclops' eyeball in between tentacles, the twins, and the minions, but it's fine. I got it, no problem. And then the twins are left once again. Skipping straight to the night of day 31, we're gonna transform Chester into Shadow Chester for extra room, very cool. And we're also also gonna light a hostile flare, which is a new flare that they introduced, which you need one Glomagoo and then three flares. So I wasn't quite sure how it worked. All I knew is that if you do it in winter, it can sometimes spawn deer pops. Um, but it only spawned two hounds, so I was like, wait, what? What's going on here? I explored around a little bit, and I found deer pops destroying some pig houses. And then I realized, oh wait, I haven't spawned the terrarium yet. So I had to quickly run back to the base ditching deer pops and go touch the terrarium, because if I didn't touch the terrarium this night, the twins would have despawned, which means I have to kill them from full HP again. And so when I left Deerclops on his own, he decided to go and kill my brand new Shadow Chester. <laughs> Can we get a moment with Shadow Chester? <laughs> right, anyway, Deerclops chopped down on my trees. Is that Retisnator? I think so. Him and Retisnator fighting, and Deerclops wins. Good job, Deerclops. Now we're just left with spasmatism. Now this guy moved so fast, it was pretty hard to make him fight Deerclops. So, um, Deerclops, please. Yes. Yes, they're fighting. Yes. He moves too fast for Deerclops. Deerclops keeps attacking in the wrong direction. And also something with raid bosses like the twins, they always prioritize the player over whatever's attacking them, at least if you're too close. So even though Deerclops is hitting the twin, he's still attacking me, which is kind of cool. But he tried to dash into me and Deerclops froze him. Anyway, Deerclops has fallen to the mighty twin, so now I just have to deal with a 1,000 health spasmatism. And he's down. The Twins of Terror is done. Rechargeable weapon? Yes, please. It's the exciting time, boys. It's time to collect and start building the chest zone. Now listen, I know you're going to point it out, so I'll just point it out. Yeah, I built the chest zone wrong. I built it all of it one tile to the left too far, so it's fine. Don't worry about it, even though it's bothering me now. If you don't know what it's supposed to look like, go watch my base building video. Anyway, this is what we've been farming for. So we can farm a garlic and potato because two potato, a garlic and a filler makes creamy potato puree, which is, uh, it gives health, sanity and hunger. And I was mostly there for the sanity part. Um, it's pretty good. Did I miss anything there? I am dying. This farming book is so good, dude. Look how satisfying it is. Just grow, you plant the crops and just immediately grow them. Mm. And then I didn't realize you could spawn the Lord of the Fruit Flies like this. I only had 15 of crops, but uh, yeah, I did it 15 crops back to back and it spawned him. So um, I guess it can spawn him. So I have to deal with him while I'm trying to deal with two shadow creatures. Everything's fine. <laughs> the beefalo that I recruited very rudely attacked one of my grumble bees. So of course we have to slaughter him and his children and we'll just get a new beefalo later. 
attacks Moose Goose in time. And for some reason, when I attack Moose Goose, even when I'm trying to tank them, the Moose Goose would just hit my Grumble Bees rather than me. The thing I was trying to do is I was trying to tank the Moose Goose so that none of my Grumble Bees died. But, you know, uh, the Moose Goose picked them off one by one and then would attack me. It's just, it's whatever. So basically, using Grumble Bees against Moose Goose isn't very effective because they just kill all the Grumble Bees. But I'm going to skip all the Moose Goose killing because it's boring. I had to keep replenishing my Grumble Bees like every one or two Moose Goose. And that is why you should pick up your feathers as soon as you can. Because the little mooselings will try to set them on fire. Frog chaos. Not a I'm not going to be getting any of these feathers. They're all on fire. Anyway, into the caves. We're approaching day 51, which is a full meme. I mean, a full moon. And so we're going to need eight skeleton pieces to block. I mean, to spawn a few of it. But we're also using them to block the moon altar when we do the, the thing. Don't worry, you'll see later. Now, um, we'll see later that I'm going to have a stack of creamy potato puree that I didn't use. So doing all of this farming is very good. After my Moose Goose killing spree, I didn't show the clip for some reason, I made the book which uses two down feathers and two papyrus, and when you read it, if it's raining, it stops it from raining, and if it's not raining, it causes it to rain. So instead of bringing an umbrella, you just bring the book, and then if it starts raining, you just turn the rain back off by reading the book. It's so good, like it's probably with one of Wicker Bottom's best books, it's insane. And now it's time for the tentacle trap, oh yeah! This is probably one of the most fun things you can do with Wicker Bottom, making a tentacle trap and just letting a boss loose inside of it. So we're gonna be doing Bee Queen, because Bee Queen is notoriously awful to kill. So if you're gonna recreate this yourself, don't do what I did here. Here I did kind of an eight by eight. You wanna do a nine by nine square with any wall you like. So I did hay walls because it's cheap, but you can kind of do it in a checkered pattern like I did so you use less walls. And what you're trying to do here is when you spawn a tentacle, it checks the area around you if it can spawn the tentacle. And since there's a bunch of walls on the ground, it won't spawn them around you, but it will spawn outside of the walls. So I made six books and used five five casts from each of the books. So I did four casts, then put them back in the bookshelf to let them recharge, and then did one more cast, and then let them recharge in the bookshelf. So I have 35 casts worth of tentacles here. I didn't say it could rain, turn that back off. Now it's time for full moon, so we're gonna build a box of walls around the moonstone. Gonna make Shadow Chester once again, hopefully he won't die. That will never happen, I never let Chester die. I'm a good parent. And we're gonna block the entrance with the uh, skeleton, uh, uh, the fossils. Grab that moon cooler staff, and then we're heading straight back to Bee Queen. So, I have tons of armor on just in case I get stuck by the tentacles so you don't want to die. So here's the idea. You wait for Bee Queen to be right on top of a bunch of tentacles, then let her attack you because that means she's going to stop for a second or two to do her attack animation. Then by the time she's done attacking, all the tentacles will be attacking her. Then you want to run far-ish away so that she's close to the edge of your screen. That way she won't be able to see you and so she'll probably attack the tentacles and not you. You'll notice there's sometimes where she's getting absolutely destroyed because she's on top of a ton of tentacles and other times where she's not getting destroyed because she's kind of just far away. If she's far away from the tentacles, so there's only like two or three attacking her, you can try to bait her into a bigger pool of tentacles, but the best place to try to lure her is against the edge of the walls because then you'll get an entire side of tentacles attacking her, but if not, don't worry about it. So using this tentacle method, it took, the fight took just under two minutes. That's kind of nuts, but you know, it does take a few minutes of, of setup time, but it's fine. Two minutes to kill the bee queen, insane, very cool. Now we have bundling wrap, which basically solves a uh, Wicked Bottom's issues of can, she can't eat stale or rotten food because we can just bundle it. Anyway, let's put the tentacle trap to the test again and we're going to spawn the Eye of Cthulhu this time because I kind of want the rechargeable helmet. And as you can see, Eye of Terror is not as strong as the Twins of Terror, but my goodness, he still destroyed an entire side of tentacles before going down to them. Actually, I finished them off. <laughs> Bees. Uh, so now I'm trying to find the Lunar Island. I'm thinking top left because there's kind of a big gap there with two end biomes. So let's get boating, boys. I was feeling lazy, so I made two sails. Otherwise, I would use a driftwood oar. And hey, I found a cookie cutter straight away. I need to pee. Sorry, I went pee. Did I say that? I found cookie cutters and then I stole some sea salt. 20 sea salt to be exact. Oh my goodness, it's summer. And now we've got a salt box. Very cool. Now look at this trick we're about to do. We're gonna feed Antlion a cold rock to start the fight and then read my rain book to cause it to start raining. And now the sandstorm's gone so I can move around Antlion freely. Now this works because when rain starts, it just pauses the uh, sandstorm, which is very cool during summer. It also pauses wildfires, which is also very cool. If I read the rain book, Antlion would just despawn uh, along with the sandstorm. So you have to start the fight before you uh, 
read the book. But anyway, I only got hit once, darn it. And finally, we recruited a buffalo. And then we recruited a buffalo and dropped off all of the Shadow Piece heads by the Shadow Piece set piece that we found before like day 21. But I didn't do it on day 21 because I didn't have enough time. So then we're heading over to Luna Island because you know, we found Luna Island. I took one of the starfish thinking I was gonna make a vault goat farm, but then I just like, uh, didn't. The main reason we came here is to bonk the uh, lunar altars out of uh, their enclosures. That way, when we make an astral detector, they'll point us towards the other altars rather than the lunar island altars. Then on our way back to the mainland, is this a Malpatross spawner? Oh my goodness, Malpatross is here. Well, um, I'm, I'm not really prepared, but I have food and armor, so let's go. So finding a Malpatross is kind of rare without having to fish, and um, not having to fish is uh, cool because fishing it makes me cry, mostly because I have to go and make stuff. And now this is why I hate sailing. My boat is not mobile at all, so while I'm there trying to position my boat, all of my grumble bees, or most of them, are killed by Malpatross. I swear, I hate sea exploration, I hate sails, they're so bad, and it takes so long to control them. And then one of my sails start catching fire, are you serious? Anyway, Malpatross, 1v1 time, you killed all my grumble bees, gosh darn it. And then, a shark? Hello? I'm trying to fight Malpatross, and the shark comes along. Unfortunately, I could not get the shark to fight Malpatross. And then Malpatross destroys not one, but both of my sails. Anyway, after a while of punching and chasing, uh, we finally killed Malpatross. Very cool. Shark has been dispatched. So during summer, I'm actually gonna use the book to cause it to rain. That way I don't have to worry about wildfires. I dug up some stone fruit bushes on the Lunar Island just to show that you could do this. When you read um, Wickerbottom's advanced horticulture book, it makes the rock fruit bushes grow to their third stage, which is very cool. So I did that three times to get three lots of harvest. And now it's day 61, so it's time for the shadow pieces. New moon. And um, my grumble bees probably could have taken out the shadow knight because there's quite a lot of them. But I didn't want to risk it because I thought maybe the rook and bishop would kill the grumble bees before I got to a level 3 knight. So I'm doing the normal order of knight, bishop, then rook, because I know I can kill the rook without taking damage in case all my grumble bees die. And good thing I did that. By the time we killed the knight and the bishop, I only had one lone grumble bee left. So um, yeah, that wasn't gonna work. So good thing I did that order. But you know, they're, ju they're just extra DPS for the first two. So it's still fine. Probably not worth doing though. Walking, walking king, magic luminescence and a path. And then you can just dodge it, no problem. The shadow ugh, heart is ours, boys. Now that moon cooler staff we made earlier, we're gonna go ahead and deconstruct that. Then go back to the lunar island, grab two of those butterflies you get from, from chopping down the lunar island trees. Then we're going to be making the full moon book. That's not what it's called, but it's when you read it, it turns the current night into a full moon night. So I can just make another moon cooler staff. And this changes the moon cycle as well. So now the full moon is on day 64. So if you don't want to wait for Glomer or Shadow Chester, I can just force it to happen and get them right away. So we make a second moon cooler staff because we actually need the gem from that to activate the archives. But first, it's summer and I don't want to be blocked from doing Pearl's tasks after summer, so I'm grabbing all of the cactus flowers I need for her tasks now. Then we're heading into the caves to uh, give a couple of love taps to these tentacles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then we find Hutch, very cool. Then we find Toadstool immediately after. And then right behind Toadstool, the blue mushroom biome was hiding. Cool! And behind the blue mushroom biome, of course, is the Lunar Grotto. That's where we need to go to activate the archives. While we're here, we're gonna mine a couple of the uh, Moonstone slash Thulsite statues to get two Thulsite for the Astral Detector as well. And then, Activate the archives. Once we did that, I forgot which forgotten knowledge is the astro detector, so I grabbed one forgotten knowledge, did the puzzle, and then found out that was the wrong one. Gosh darn it. Second attempt, I get a forgotten knowledge from this machine and. It was the right one, very cool. Did I ever tell you how much I like living logs? So uh, whenever I see these gnomes, um, I'm gonna kill them because they drop two living logs or one or two living logs. Let's build and use the astral detector to find the other lunar altar pieces that we're missing. Farming. Except it's redundant, I told you, but I don't need to do this farming. A second Lord of the Fruit Flies. Speedrun planting more pine cones for Berger, ready for Berger. Now, so once we dug up all the astral water pieces, it points us towards Crab King. We're not gonna kill Crab King yet, but it's nice to know where he is. Stupid shark, how dare you try challenge me and my grumble army. So now we need eight purple gems for Crab King, and we have exactly eight, would you look at that? Now, I didn't know how the uh, super duper flare, I didn't know how the hostile flare worked, so I thought maybe it would spawn Berger early, but it didn't. It didn't do anything when I lit it during autumn, but oh well, worth a try. Then we commit kill on the spider quarry. 
What the? Are you gonna hit me over the ocean? Excuse me. Hello, Bulgare. It's born of those Grumble Beasts. pointless. Bear to kill them all instantly. Oh my goodness. Two swipes and they're gone. Anyway, Bulgare, come with me. It's time to knock down some trees. Now, I don't actually want the logs, although they're nice, but I actually want tree guards. You know this, though. I kn you know I want tree guards. And so, of course, by knocking down over my 100 trees, we get exactly uh, one tree guard. What the hell? So, we're gonna take Bulgare to a forest. Oh my goodness. There's a baby tree guard and daddy tree guard's coming in for backup. Baby tree guard's holding his own. He's at half health, though. This is not looking good. No, machine. <laughs> my son. Who's gonna win, ladies and gentlemen? German tree daddy or Bulgare? My goodness, a, a left hook out of nowhere from Bulgare takes out German daddy tree guard. <laughs> this is stupid. Anyway, we avenge the forest by taking out the Bulgare. Right, I'm not gonna say Bulgare anymore. Okay, just one more time. Bulgare. And with his fur, we're gonna make the insulated backpack, which is a backpack, but upgraded to be a fridge. So, um, yoink, wood. Look at this hound attack, and there's one frog, there's like five hounds to attack, and he attacks me. Excuse me, frog. Now, we're at Pearl's Island, so you might think that I look slightly insane. Yes, I am insane. I'm also quite insane in the game as well. I don't know why I tried to make the berry bushes and flowers that look so neat and tidy. This does not matter. So we've done all of Pearl's tasks except one, which is giving her either an umbrella during a spring rain or giving her an insulation vest during uh, winter when it's snowing. And uh, it's autumn right now, so we're gonna have to wait for winter or spring, uh, but we wait for winter, don't worry. Heading back down into the caves, because we really wanna f wait. Anyway, back to the ruins, we're gonna make what we, uh, what we always wanted. Um, an extra lazy explorer or two, plus some armor, plus another star quality staff, well, why not? And also, I decided I didn't have enough armor, so we're gonna be using the green gems to duplicate full sight by making, uh, full sight suits with the construction amulet and deconstruct them with the deconstruction staff. Oh, my infantry's full. If only I had extra infantry space. Wait, didn't we pick up Hutch? Oh, wait, Hutch is dead. You must distract the monkeys. How could that have happened? I'm a good parent. I would never let Hutch die. Salute to you, Hutch. That is how our hero Hutch has fallen by a troop of monkey. Now that we have a ton of crowns, we're gonna break down these tentacle pillars, except for this one where my crown didn't activate, so I just got stun locked until my shield nearly broke. But anyway, after a few of these technical pillars, we finally found the atrium. At least it wasn't the last technical pillar. Oh, what, what luck. I'm gonna mark this with a handy dandy chest. Hutch is back. Hutch, my son, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Bees. I don't know why I'm spam examining Glomer. And now finally, weather pains with the construction amulets to try save on down feathers. Now, by the end of the run, I have the perfect amount of down feathers, which is very cool. Now, you might see that dwarf star in the middle of my farm while I'm farming and say, Jakey, why did you put the dwarf star that can set things on fire in the middle of your very flammable farm. And to that, I would say, okay, buddy, if you're so smart, how about you do this? And then you can, you can do it. <laughs> because, you know, I'm terrible at the game. I had to look up a guide. Now, th this guy, like, he sucks. But I had to look up his guide to check how many weather pans I needed for Toadstool. Oh, no, don't subscribe to this guy. This guy's channel is awful. Zero out of ten. And then I went into the caves and cast my rain book. I don't know why I did this. I'm not going to be using a uh, electric weapon against Toadstool. So, oh, I don't know why I did it. Before Toadstool, I build my Grumble army downstairs. Because you can summon and down into the cave is pretty cool. And we make our way to Tokdal. Now you might think, why didn't you make a tentacle trap? Surely that would have been effective. And to that I would say, you're right. But also Toadstool would have killed them in like, not very long. Anyway, Big Daddy Toadstool's here. Now, as expected, my Grumble Bees are gonna die like almost immediately because the Boom Shrooms have big air of effect and uh, they do big PP damage. And so yeah, my Grumble Bees die pretty fast, but at least they were some free damage until they, um, Perish. This fight's the same as normal. We're gonna be using a full sight body with a um Tam Oshana because um sanity with a dank sword and a lazy explorer for speed. Uh, this fight's the same. He summons boom shrooms, you avoid them, just don't get hit forehead, very easy. Use the weather panes to break down his trees. Uh, he stomps in the last phase and bada bim, bada boom, he did. If, if you want to see a more comprehensive guide, go watch my expert guide that tells you how to kill Toad's door. Anyway, I ended up using like what six weather paints? This fight took just under 15 minutes, by the way. One five. Anyway, heckin' bopped. Oh my gosh, I got his shell armor. Wow, very cool. I'm actually not going to use this. Wow. Anyway, back on the surface, it is winter, except it's not snowing. I need it to snow, otherwise I can't give Pearl the vest for the last point so that I can get the pearls so that I can fight Crab King so that I can fight Slytherin Champion. Then I thought I could force it to snow by using my rain book, but turns out even in winter, it just causes it to rain and not to snow. So that didn't work. Oh my god, it is snowing! 
Hello. Have a da- <laughs> Coat. Yes. Pearl? Pearl! No, I missed the max friendship music. <laughs> I'm so sad. I didn't practice any of these boss fights using Wicker Bottom's books. And um, you're about to see a prime example of that because it's time for Crab King. So the idea here is that if you can swarm Crab King with a bunch of followers like spiders or, um, I don't know, bees, then you don't need to deal with his healing and you can be far enough away that he doesn't do the freeze attack and all he does is the geyser attack. So the solution is simple. We just have to stay far enough away from C Crab King so that he does no attacks except the geyser attack, and that gives the Grumblebees plenty of time to do tons of damage to him. But there's a problem. Grumblebees always try to get back to Wicker Bottom if she gets too far away. Um, so I need to stay in the Goldilocks zone between far enough away from Crab King so that he only does the geyser attack, but close enough so that my Grumblebees don't run back to me. Now this fight was kind of a disaster, um, you'll see why. Also, if I'm too close to Crab King, he'll do his freezing attack, which freezes all of my Grumblebees, which makes my Grumblebees sad, cold, and hard. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm like, just like my poops. So now we know roughly how far away we can get, which is not very far at all. In fact, it, I can't quite go far enough away so that the claws don't attack my boat, but it's fine. We'll just have to deal with it. We have to let the Grumblebees have to stay on Crab King for the entire fight. Otherwise, he just heals. I'm getting into the groove of it now, though. His healing is being cancelled from all the Grumblebee attacks. Girl, Sean, I moved too far away. I'm sorry, my Grumblebees, please attack Crab King again. Please, please. Yes. Yes. My Grumblebees have taken out the Crab King. This boat has taken a battering. It has so many holes poked in it, over 20 holes. So um, I abandoned that boat and went to my other boat, grabbed the old piece, sailed off to the Lunar Island. Now we're looking for a triangle made by these celestial fisher holes. They don't really form a triangle. I mean, kind of. What the hell? My beefalo has been afflicted with a great illness. Horny. Now there is only one effective way of curing Horny. We have to take him to the caves to scare the Horny out of him. Yes, yes. And it worked. If you take a beefalo in heat to the caves, it actually just like turns off the heat so they can just, uh, they're just normal again. No Horny beefalo. Taking the beefalo to Lunar Island to put the uh, altar pieces in place. As soon as I jump off the boat, I get jump scared by these penguins, and I could have died if I didn't put on my full sight crown. So I slotted in all of the altar pieces and to absolutely no one's surprise, um, it didn't activate anything, because that's obviously not a triangle, Jakey. Are you stupid? Oh. Tree Angle has been created. Yeah, I haven't killed Fuel Eater yet, so um, let's do that. So I'm spawning in my bee army, although I have absolutely zero faith that they'll make the trip to Fuel Eater. I think they'll just die to everything in between during in the, uh, the atrium's um, maze. And even if they do make it through the maze, they're instantly going to die to Fuel Eater because his, his normal attack is air of effect. Exploring the atrium, I ran into just about every single dead end, which is the worst possible uh, the way, the way it could go. I didn't say it could rain. We finally found Fuel Weavers at the heart of the atrium where we can spawn a Fuel Weaver. First skeleton? Oh, that's the, that's the wrong one. Second skeleton. Third skeleton. Nope. Fourth skeleton. Nice. And we give him a heart. And there he is, the beautiful ancient Fuel Weaver. Now this fight is exactly the same as if you are Wilson, because um, as you can see, my Grumblebees get instantly unalived. Otherwise, this fight actually went relatively smoothly, so, uh, yeah, can't complain. Just so you can see how well it went, we'll watch one cycle from each of the phases, and uh, did, then we'll watch the end.
Maggie Escape, the atrium, and it immediately begins crying. So we're not allowed to do that. Just turn off the crying. No crying today. As soon as I come out of the caves, Diaclops is ready to say hello. So I take him to my tent place. Now that means the only boss left now is Celestial. Running through the lunar storms, uh, this stupid moose goose chased me all the way and my grumblies. Look at him. Look how far he's chasing me. So we um took him out after we found Wagstaff, got the blueprints, and began the mini games. Uh, you know how to do this mini game. We gotta mine stuff, give stuff to Wagstaff, kill stuff, capture stuff, then we win, and we have to do that again two more times for three times in total. And there's one last thing we're missing to spawn Celestial Champion. Oh right, the Celestial Orb. And we so we go back to the mosaic biome, I find it. Time to take my from my bees, my books to the lunar island to fight the moon. So you can see, I have a full bee army here. There are at least more than four bees, correct? Correct. But as soon as I land on the lunar island, there's only four bees there. So I guess the rest of them got stuck. And um, because there's a limit on how many bees you can have, the stuck ones off screen still count towards that limit. So I can't spawn more bees. Now, can you guess what we're building? Again, I didn't practice any of these fights. So I don't know how effective this temple trap will be against the two champion, but we'll, we'll see. Because there were still a bunch of bees off screen stuck somewhere. I attempted to despawn them by logging out and logging back in, but that didn't help. And then I get a hound attack. Get whipped, idiot. Anyway, because um the Grumble Bees didn't despawn, I'm gonna perform this high level gamer move called um cheating. Okay, I did use the command line, but just to despawn all of the Grumble Bees so that I could summon more. Because you know, over half of them were stuck somewhere which I didn't know where. Ah, oh, much better. We don't have a full army of Grumble Bees, but it's definitely more than four. Again, we're gonna leave all of these uh books in the bookcase so they can recharge. Now for phase one, when Celestial Chairman does his like tumble attack where he rolls towards you, I'm trying to roll him towards the tentacle trap and away from my grumble bees, but it didn't always work, but it's fine. So that attack is pretty devastating if it hits any of the tentacles or grumble bees. His other very devastating attack uh, is his slam attack where he slams on the ground multiple times. That killed my tentacles if he was right on top of them. Phase one went pretty smoothly. Let's speed it up. I managed to get Celestial Champions phase one on top of some tentacles and he's getting whipped. Getting whipped so hard that it puts him into his defensive stance. Ah, but it was in vain as he has fallen and it's now time for phase two Celestial Champion. Now, um, phase two Celestial Champion starts with Chainsaw Attack and um, yeah. Again, I'm gonna try and lure Celestial Champion into this tentacle trap, but it doesn't really work because when he spins, he just kills whatever's in his path. I'm trying to lure him into the tentacle trap, uh, like at the end of his spin. Anyway, that's about it for phase two. Let's speed it up. Phase three is a little bit smart. Phase three does this thing where he would try to run away from me, but then he would see that there's a bunch of tentacles next to him. So he would just run away from the tentacles and run back towards me. So it was really hard to try to get Celestial Champion into the tentacle trap, at least the phase three version, to the point that I just gave up because he just didn't want to go in there. No matter what I did, I couldn't push him into the tentacle trap. So otherwise, this is basically just a normal Celestial Champion phase three fight, except sometimes tentacles join in. Hit stop, it's time to invite the B army back to the fight in phase three. Let's see how long that lasts. They didn't even die to Celestial Champion, they died to the pillars that Celestial Champion summons. Gosh darn it. At this point in the fight, I wasn't even trying to kill Celestial Champion. I was just desperately trying to push him into the tentacles to see what would happen. But he, like, uh, as you can see, he just keeps running away from the tentacles. So yeah, I did try. I tried. But anyway, Celestial Champion has fallen and the run is done. Woohoo! 
all bosses with reworked wicker bottom, using her books most of the time. Overall, pretty darn cool additions to the book. Good rework, I would say. Good rework. Good job, boys. Oh, uh, shoot, wait, um, I don't have a light source, and it's a, a new moon. Um, 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 infused moon shards give off a little bit of light, my heroes. Oh, wait, I'm so smart. I can just use the weather pane to break slash a champion to get the crown. Then use my sanity food to activate the crown, and then the crown gives me light. Oh, I'm so smart. Huge brain. Then immediately read a grumble bee book to, to drain my sanity. Oops. Ahoy hoy, it's gaming time. Oh, my boat. We live by the book, and now we die by the book. Oh, um, lightning rod kind of, kind of ruined me. Hammer down the lightning rod. Live by the book, die by the book. Ah, it's more like it. We're all being toasted to death. Good job, boys. Salute to Wicked Bottom and the Grumblebees and the books and the base. To be extra cruel to the moon, I just drained its power by killing Celestial Champion. But I thought I would force it to work by making it a full moon using the full moon book for extra pain. So I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that I didn't just um, that I didn't just read this entire outro script um, and I wasn't recording. So let's do that again. So <laughs> the old oh wicker bottom boss run was done. Very fun. I found it fun. I hope you found it fun to watch. Anyway, the new rankings. First of all, let's talk about the old rankings. The old rankings are from my all character review video, and the survivability for wicker bottom was five out of ten. Utility was nine out of ten, and combat five out of ten. So let's start with her new survivability rating. Her health was reduced, and she doesn't heal from stale and spoiled food. Survivability is worse than like Wilson, and Wilson's meant to be five out of ten. So we have to give wicker bottom four out of. 10 for survivability now. Moving on to utility though, before it was a really good 9 out of 10 because of all the books they were so powerful and had a lot of powerful farms, but now she's even more powerful because she has more books, the same farms, and her books can recharge so you don't need to use as many reads. So we're gonna of course give her utility a perfect 10 out of 10 because it's insane, she's just one of the best characters, top 3 characters for sure. Now on to combat. Her combat ranking used to be 5 out of 10 except now, Wickerbottom can summon Grumblebees and being able to summon minions and like a lot of minions is pretty powerful against like half of the bosses or like some of the bosses you know like dragonfly bee queen where you can just swarm them and they die really fast so we're gonna bump combat up to 7 out of 10 so overall this rework was actually really good I expected the more books and just having weird and wacky effects but I didn't expect the bookshelf which recharges the books over time which like I said if you just like practice restraint with your books and don't drain them down to 0% um, then you can just let them recharge over time so you don't have to use as many reads and next video will be a guide on one of my food farm factory designs in Don't Starve Together, so look forward to that. You know, it's a personal design. It makes lots of food, lots of meat. And comment which character you want to see a boss run do next. I will uh, do that next. And thank you for watching, friendos. See you next time. Yes.